so today's topic is all about hazards okay so what is meant by hazard anything which has a potential to cause harm in short so here we are looking at some activities okay which has multiple hazards okay there are many hazards in a certain activity okay so here when we are discussing about excavation okay what is an excavation it is a man made cavity it is a man made cavity on earth surface okay on earth surface man made cavity on earth surface so this is either can be done by mechanical or manual so in excavation we have either mechanical excavation what is mechanical excavation yeah we are using equipments and we have manual excavation okay so there are two type of excavation now even in excavation we can differ as uh, when we can differentiate excavation from trench okay excavation is a huge activity okay is a huge cavity made on earth surface whereas trench the length is more than the width okay even the trench trench is also an excavation is also an excavation but the length is more than the width length is more hmm? yeah like if you are making any tunnels digging for any drainage system cable laying so all these things we have to dig trenches okay we have to dig trenches so this the length is more the width is less and the depth can be shallow can be shallow it can be low or more doesn't matter most okay but when it comes to excavation excavation is a huge big pits okay even both in width depth and length it is huge cavity okay understood the difference between excavation and trench so this part of excavation will come under civil works this part of excavation will come under civil works okay so we will see about civil works a bit later so now while coming to excavation what are the hazards so if you are taking excavation as an activity what are the hazards associated with the activity what are the hazards associated with this activity sorry cavins okay and engulfment okay or collapse of excavation and fall fall of material or person right yeah there might be underground utilities underground utilities okay underground utilities like electrical lines sewer lines there may be some water lines or any of the process lines right if we are in an uh, plant there might be some gas lines there might be crude lines or there might be some chemical transfer lines okay so all these are hazards in excavation 
so apart from this there may, there are other hazards where your vehicles or equipment can topple into excavation even a vehicle or equipment can fall into excavation okay right so any other hazards cave ins engulfment collapse of excavation fall of persons or material underground utilities vehicle equipment these are the major hazards right there are other hazards which might be you know there might be some snakes scorpions insects okay and apart from that one very important hazard is water seepage water seepage i mean if you are digging it close to any river beds or ocean beds what happens water will come in okay so water ingress okay and remember one thing excavation with a depth of 1.2 meters is considered as confined space confined space excavation with depth of more than 1.2 meters is considered as confined space okay so we have hazards now what are the control measures okay for every hazard we need some control measure so first we will understand what is cave in what is meant by cave in cave in means it is a uh, see if this is your excavation you have to dig it in this way okay this is full ground and a person is digging okay he is digging when he is digging he will not dig it straight right so there might be some sort of ingress okay he might dig it in this way if he did not see it so this is all an extra cavity that is formed under the excavation now what is happening now this weight of this material okay is sustained because of this particular connection here right now if this particular uh, weight could not be held by this point what will happen this will collapse so this part this excess cut is called as cave in that means it is like a cave cave being over dig more than what is required so the weight above the cave which will not be sustained and it will lead to collapse of excavation is called cave ins cave ins are dangerous okay so what happens if there is a cave in all this material will fall onto the person okay so when it falls onto the person then what will happen the person will be covered with excavated material okay sometimes even though excavation is being done all the material what they will do here they have excavated they will pour all the material here like this excavated material right just beside of excavation so this material can fall even because of the cave in the material might fall so if it falls what will happen the person will be trapped inside okay if the material or the excavated soil will fall he will be trapped inside what inside inside the excavated material or soil okay so what happens next because of the load his heart will cease to work okay first thing he will not get oxygen suffocation so these two are the major chances because of which he will die okay so this particular okay uh, you know 
the consequence this particular consequence which has happened is called as engulfment okay this particular consequence is called as engulfment first because of the weight on his chest his heart will not beat and he will not be able to breathe because of lack of oxygen two things so he has to be rescued immediately as quickly as possible okay this is the point and next one see the excavation whenever we are doing excavation why the excavation collapses because the excavation will collapse because of the type of soil okay how many types of soils we are having huh? okay what are those type a type b type c what is type a soil so it is hard soil it is moderate soil okay moderate soil condition it is loose soil okay right these are the three type of soils so for this how will you determine whether it is hard soil moderate soil or loose soil we use potentiometer what pocket penetrometer sorry not potentiometer pocket penetrometer right just look at penetrometer what is penetrometer we have a device or instrument called as pocket penetrometer okay it is used for a uh, soil test right soil penetrometer soil penetrometer or soil compaction tester okay we have soil penetrometer or soil compaction tester okay by using this we will determine the type of soils okay if if the surface which stands uh, so what is the levels that we are looking at if it is for type a greater than 1.5 you have this material or you can open it so if it is greater than 1.5 ton what is it ah ton per square foot then it is type a sorry type a okay and if it is in between 0.5 to 1.5 ton per square feet type b and if it is less than 0.5 is less than or equal to it is in between okay it is type c right that means type a is hard soil type b is moderate soil and type c is loose soil okay depending on the soil condition we will use different methods to prevent collapse of excavation see now we are discussing about excavation collapse so in order to prevent collapse of excavation first we have to determine the type of soil condition right so once we have determined the type of soil condition we will use the techniques of sloping shoring 
benching and that's all three okay so what is sloping see if it is a loose soil loose soil the best method of protecting an excavation is always slow uh, always sloping best and easiest and cheapest method of excavation is best method of uh, prevention of excavation collapse is sloping provided we need too much of space okay we need too much of space why because normally if this is a place that needs to be ex excavated okay now on the ground we have to excavate this much of place this is our excavation place okay for sloping what we will do now if we we'll excavate it like this this will collapse because it is loose soil so instead of excavating like this what we will do is we will excavate it in this way okay we will excavate in excavate it in this way now will the excavation collapse no even though if a soil will come it will be only till here right so no additional measures required if we are going for sloping what we have to do is we have to check the angle of slope check the angle of slope we have to provide proper entry and exit for the people working inside the excavation okay second thing is shoring see here we need too much of space right because we are digging this extra hmm, we are making it big and we need place for people movement vehicle movement keep the material take the material out so we need too much of space for sloping now when there is no sufficient space we can go for shoring okay in shoring what we will do is we will use wood okay and jacket method so we will place wood along the line of excavation okay that means we will what we will do we will place wood here okay and wood on the both sides okay we will place wood on the both sides and what we will do we will give support okay we will give support so this support will make sure that the excavation will not collapse okay so in this also there are different shoring we can do this shoring by concrete especially if you are taking some civil civil activities infrastructure activities where uh, you know uh, you might have seen some underpasses being constructed or if there is any huge uh, high rise building being constructed where the excavation is too deep so when the excavation is too deep certainly you have to go for concrete shoring okay they will drill all the metal bars and they will pour whole lot of concrete and that will support the whole excavation okay or you can go for mechanical or pneumatic uh, shoring okay mechanical or pneumatic shoring where there will be hydraulic uh, you know uh, hydraulic press or hydraulic bars kind of stuff okay so we will apply the required pressure okay we will have metal uh, metals metal supports on both sides of the excavation and we will provide this metal bars and we will give hydraulic pressure or pneumatic pressure to withstand withhold the particular excavation so this is shoring so this is especially uh, very widely used okay because this will save space time and energy space time and energy okay next is benching even benching requires too much of space okay see for uh, sloping you can easily use if it is a loose soil this is the best preferred uh, you know method loose soil if it is moderate soil then you can go for moderate soil or heavy soil you can uh, go for shoring if it is heavy soil it is hard we need to excavate if it is hard means that will not collapse easily 
okay so excavation is deep excavation is deep so by doing this benching method we have two uses that one we can use this as a steps to enter into excavation and second thing is the excavation will not collapse so easily okay only thing is you need to determine the distance and height of every step okay so you need to determine the height of every step and size foot size okay foot rest size so how much size of the uh, what should be the size of the step and what should be the height of the step you will have to determine based on the space requirements okay you have some angles you need to calculate all these things civil engineers will do so we are always there to just go and check with him whether this is feasible or not okay right so these are the precautionary protocols or engineering controls that we can do for to prevent excavation collapse these three are okay to prevent excavation collapse okay so next in general what will happen see whenever there is an excavation okay whenever there is an excavation you are excavating the whole place right you are excavating the whole place so all this excavated material they will pile it up here this is very risky okay so we have to make sure we give sufficient distance to store the material and we should not allow any sort of vehicles to go, to move around the excavated spaces okay we should not allow any vehicles to move along the excavated spaces we need to provide sufficient distance okay, to make sure the vehicles will not come too close to the excavation they have to be as far as possible so man movement and machine movement has to be limited so a person has to enter into the excavation and exit from the excavation so we have to give proper access and egress proper access and egress so what are the other control measures that we are doing first thing is no excavated material excavated material shall not be kept near the excavation okay excavated material shall not be placed shall not be placed near the excavation placed at edge of excavation and second thing is no machine nori or vehicle movement near excavation safe distance to be demarcated okay and third provision of proper access and egress for people to enter and exit excavation these are some other control measures which will help us to prevent excavation collapse and fourth one no vibration equipments to be used near to 
excavation. So no vibration equipment to be used near to the excavation. What happens if it is uh, vibrating? The excavation will again collapse because the soil will settle down and the excavation will collapse. So these are the things that we need to take care. Okay. So the next question is how do we find out the underground utilities? Okay. How do we find out if there are any underground utility, utilities and what should we do? So what we will do is we will do ultrasound testing, ultrasound testing or we will use some device like ground penetrating radar, yeah we can use it to determine underground facilities. So if there are any underground facilities, if there are any underground facilities, okay, we will not allow mechanical excavation. Okay, only yeah, only manual excavation is allowed. Got it? No mechanical excavation if there is a presence of underground facilities. So only manual excavation is allowed. And uh, second thing, if it is an electrical cable which is going underground, then also manual excavation. Any underground facilities, no mechanical excavation, only manual excavation permitted simple so that we can protect underground facilities at the same time we can protect protect people also okay right so uh, now we have we completed all the hazards did we complete all the hazards sure we have control measures for all the hazards so what you will do, uh, what you will do is you need to list uh, list out all the hazards and see if all the control measures are there. So try to write down all the control measures for every hazard because we have to minimize the hazard. So for every hazard there has to be a control measure. Okay, write it down separately. So this will be the assignment for uh, this will be the common assignment for all the discussions that we are doing. Uh, under this particular uh, you know occupational hazards safety and hazard assessment okay got it so this is uh, most more or less this much is about excavation okay so one more thing is water seepage if there is a water seepage what we will do if there is a water ingress water ingress what we will do is we have to remove water before entering into excavation okay simple install pump sets remove water only if the water is cleared then we will have to enter into excavation or else we should not enter into excavation okay so and another point I have mentioned is excavation more than 1.2 meters is considered as confined space. So regarding confined space we will discuss uh, at that time I will clarify as what to be done in case of excavation as well. Okay. Okay. Apart from that anything else? Clear? Okay. Fine. 